Hey guys, I'm Cecilia Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review the movie Trolls World Tour. If you end up enjoying this review, then con consider joining my Patreon page. Any donations are desperately needed. Alrighty then. This movie starts out with some narration from Poppy, uh, essentially just recapping the first movie. Uh, and in terms of the <coughs> in terms of the first movie, uh, you know, Trolls is essentially like a music video type movie that has its either one or two original songs. So, like that, uh, Trolls World Tour is very much the same thing with a different gimmick in terms of everything outside of that. So let's get into the recap. So the movie actually starts in this underwater area, and we see these underwater trolls uh, that are doing um, a more different style of music, uh, very techno-based. Uh, and the immediate shots, um, the best way I can describe this, uh, as they are getting ready for the bass to drop, when it does drop, it's like they have an orgasm. That's what that was. <laughs> That's how the movie begins, alright? Let's let's not beat around the bush here. Alright. So, the DJ, after that sequence, uh, stops the music, seeing a little ship coming their way. So... We meet the Queen of Rock. Her name is Riff. And she wants to take their string. And she has brought her gang of rockers with her. So, her desire, which she claims, is that she wants the entire Troll Nation to be under one type of music. And that is rock and roll. Uh, we cut back to our lead, Poppy, singing about trolls just want to have fun. So as I said, music video with songs that are pre-existing, they just switch out one of the wor words. Instead of girls, they change it to trolls. And of course, we have Branch, her friend at the beginning of the movie anyway, um, joining her in the song. So, just to, again, to recap, he was the one that was all loomed out in the first movie, now he has joined in on the most of the fun. Uh, he still has his uh, pessimistic tendencies, but nonetheless, um, so, we kind of jump around to all the various trolls in, in this facility, and among them we see the Sparkle Troll, um, uh, have a baby? Uh, that's, you know, orgasms, guy trolls having babies. Yeah, this movie's bizarre, <laughs> right? Uh, whew. So, as we get back to Branch, he's beating around the bush. Uh, he had, I don't remember in the first movie if he actually ever said that he, like, told Poppy that he loved her. Oh, uh, that was kind of even obvious at the end of the first movie. So, nonetheless, he's still, he's beating around the bush, so I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna assume he never actually really said it in the first movie, but he's still not saying it regardless. And then he gets friend-zoned. Talk about big oof. So, this bigger troll named Iggy comes run running at them and gives them a note uh, about the rock star uh, getting ready to come to them. And the father, her father comes out of nowhere and starts freaking out about this, and they, he says that they need to run. Uh... 
speaking of the different types of trolls, the, the trolls that we have been following since the first movie, if it wasn't obvious, are pop trolls. Uh, so he talks about some exposition about their past, about how the different types of music used to be in harmony, and then now how each of them, uh, each of the six main ones, uh, even though I'm, you know, you can't do that many, but there are six strings and at the, at, for the point of this movie, uh, and they all go their separate ways, thinking that all of their music has become more and more different, and they need to have been separated. And he, on top of that, shows her the pop string. So, of course, he, he's like still rushing them to leave. However, by contrast, Poppy wants them to unite everyone back together. Uh, so she s decides to head out uh, and get ready to leave. And Branch, of course, being worried about her, decides to join her. Uh, the Hat Troll, I don't remember his name, to be honest, from both movies. Uh, he notices that in the picture of the history book that they were shown is a very similar troll-like look to him. So he thinks that he has been... Uh, that he doesn't belong in this group, so he's gonna head out and also mosey along to find the trolls that look like him. So, we cut back <clears throat> to our punk trolls and our uh, our antagonist, Riff, singing uh, Crazy Train, uh, a very classic rock song. Uh, and they already have one of the strings, of course, as I mentioned, the techno string, as I uh, went over. Uh, so, she goes over her plan, uh, and how, you know, as I mentioned before, how she wants everything to just be rock. And as the two, or as we cut back to uh, Poppy and Branch, we see that Biggie, the big troll in the bottom right of the poster, uh, is somehow already on them, with, uh, is already with them. So, she sees that Branch has brought his weapons as a form of, you know, doing it his way, but Poppy, uh, kicks all of his weapons out of the blimp. Um... So they come across a other music area. The they come they and they come across this little flute thing or a part of a flute. Um, and he, this little thing explains how this place has come to ruin. Uh, and we see the flashback to see that these were uh, these little things were a part of the classic trolls set up. So, she, Poppy, has the pop string with her. She brought it along with her, thinking, like, oh, I'll just give it away or whatever, because, you know, everything will work out that way. She proceeds to make a pinky promise, which they make a big deal about. Uh, once they make a big, uh, between her and Big Biggie, about him being safe and on their journey, uh, the pinky promise proceeds to make them float up and then do a whole boomf sort of thing. Anyways, uh, we cut back to Riff, our antagonist of the film, and she's talking about friendship. Now this is an interesting scene, because she's, she's talking about how friendship takes time. So she understands that, and yet she, she's all about the whole plan thing, going about you know, domination of music. You know, it's not as crazy as like, oh, take over the world, even though they use the phrase, you know, sort of take over the world in their in their way, 
because that's how powerful music is to them. Which, to be fair, music is powerful. I'm not going to deny that music is meaningless or anything like that. Um, so anyways... So, after that, she's talking about hiring some bounty hunters, and we have our, this is where we have our other varying types of musics, uh, from K-pop, to, uh, yodeling, to, um, reggae, to, uh, I think there was one other one, and I forgot which one it was, I think it was, like, smooth jazz that they uh, mentioned, um, anyway, that comes in a little bit later to have a greater effect. So, they kind of go across the country of the Trolllands, and they come across, they finally reach the country troll area, and they see it's all bloom and gloom. So they're kind of doing a little bit of mocking of each of the genres uh, the country tends to uh, typically be very more mellow, very sad, um, and they use that with all the other genres as well to an extent. Um, and it does get into it with rock and all the other ones I mentioned so far. Um, so anyways, Poppy sees all of this going on, and she's like, whoa, they, these country, you know, they need some Poppy pop music. So, she goes over the plan with Branch and Biggie, and they say, oh, we're just gonna play all of the pop songs. So, the next song overload is a various amounts of various pop songs. Um, I don't, I can't, I, I wish I wrote most of them down, but I didn't. The only one I immediately recognized was Gondom Style, immediately. I, I heard one other one I recognized, but I don't remember the name of it off, off the top of my head right now. Um, uh, but they, like, go, like, from song to song, and they, they do all of, like, all the big ones that have been like in, in some of the recent years and the funniest moment of the movie happens after they finish we hear somebody just yell you suck <laughs> uh that always that's something like that always gets to me like just that out of nowhere like you you have no talent or something or rather of that kind of uh, very good comedy right there. Um, anyways. So, Branch, uh, is having a little moment, or is attempting to have a little moment with Poppy before they get cut off, where they meet a new troll who has a back leg, so it looks like a horse, and then a troll on top. Uh, this troll's name is Hickory frees them from their cage and as they are being chased there's like a song in the background which is I think the only time that happens um, so they get they dive across this gap and then they fall into the water we have a cut um, this random cut in the movie where we see the bug the little bug that the big blue troll is holding um, like is lifted into the high air, sees another bug, and then falls down. It's a weird, odd moment. Nonetheless, um, Hickory builds them a raft in record time, and Branch is like, Whoa! Uh, meanwhile, uh, the country leader uh, meets up with or I already kind of know is that the queen, uh, the rock queen is coming in. Uh, 
and oh, sorry, we have Poppy uh, having a moment with Branch. Uh, that I must read my notes there. Uh, having a moment. Uh, it's probably the oddest moment, or one of the odd moments in terms of writing. Um, of like, oh, she doesn't think she's a good queen now. Uh, because she had met someone and was, like, all generous and kind or whatever. Um. So, this is where we meet some of our bounty hunters, uh, as they're going across the water. Uh, we have the Jazz Troll, um, uh, and he's playing some smooth-ass jazz. And this moment causes both Poppy and Ranch to have googly hearts and be all like, Whoa, this guy's sexy! Uh, so, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is one of the first animated movies to have a bisexual moment in it. Um... I think so. I think this is the first animated movie I've seen this happen in, uh, to my recollection. And I'm really glad that that wasn't promoted, <clears throat> Disney, I'm looking at you when I say that, because, you know, it's still used as a kind of joke, question mark? The way it's shown is really, like, the bounty hunter is, like, trying to, like, clearly do something to them. So I'm not sure if it was, like, meant to be a joke. But, like, they go through, like, it's like a get-off-drugs type of moment where they're just, like, hallucinating after the fact. But still, hey, you know, branches by, I guess. That's cool. At least he had a moment of by curiosity, at the very least, I guess. Cool. Moving right along. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> let's see. So, they, uh, Hickory gets rid of that guy pretty quickly. I mean, he had a uh, little ear uh, muffs, which is why he was able to uh, not get all woozied up uh, and Poppy was the one who offered those to him in the first place and Biggie sees these hunters coming after them as a breaking, breaking of promise so he goes off and he leaves he's very upset uh, and we're back with the country troll uh, all the while uh you know, she has a little moment of them, like, trying to give chase, but then can no longer give chase. <clears throat> so, we see that the hat troll, uh, he's been sort of traveling a little bit, and he eventually gets picked up by this ship. And then we cut away back to Hickory singing a little song. And then uh, Branch decides to have a little talk with Hickory, and Hickory's already like, you two have a thing. I know. Uh, but the ship that we just saw picks the three of them up as well. <clears throat> so they meet the Funk Trolls, slash one rap troll among the Funk Trolls. And they talk about... Uh, the backstory as well, but they add in a factor that was not brought up in the original backstory. How the pop, the original pop troll, aka Pop's father, or Poppy's father, was the one who actually stole the strings beforehand. That Pop was the one responsible for stealing all of the other musics, um, and then just sort of copying them. Again, this is a dig at Pop, as I mentioned before. Uh, they, they, they take their, their, their pot shots at the genres. So, uh, she 
says, but we were all the same. We're all trolls. But then he's like, no, no, no. We are, we, we are trolls. Don't get that twisted. But we are still different. And we clearly see what the setup of this is. It is actually pretty obvious where the movie is going throughout the entire movie. Uh, as soon as it's all like, oh, we're going to make things all the same. Um, in terms of music again. So, this is where Branch and Poppy have, uh, get a little split up from Hickory as the rockers arrive. And their bubble breaks as they come down to the truth. And Branch has his little moment of truth with Poppy in terms of just telling her that she wasn't listening to all the advices that she was given along the way. So there's also a moment of being what a queen is supposed to be throughout the movie, uh, and they and, he, and that is a common theme throughout the movie. Excuse me. So at the end of his little speech, he asked why he likes her so much, and as he's so upset, he kind of just goes off still kind of going off on his own and he sings about it uh and she joins him via the spectrum like this we see her silhouetted i guess is the best way to put it without actually being silhouetted she's not really there but she's there in the song joining him if that makes sense and this, by the way, the song that they are singing is the first original song in this movie. So, this is where I'll give the movie some credit. Um, this, in terms of music, I think is actually a lot better than um, the Elvin and the Chipmunk movies, the current CGI ones anyway, uh, because they have the at least the, the drive to write new music for the movie, unlike uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, which don't have any original music in the new C in this current CGI movies. So I give them props for that as well. So while Branch is off on his own, he gets taken by the K-pop gang, but the reggae uh, cho group is also there, and they also want him. So, the two groups decide that they're going to have a dance battle, or a sing-off. And Branch, oddly, joins both groups. Uh, meaning, when when group sings, they force him to sing along and dance along with them. And, of course, Branch, being a part of the pop group, being a part of that joke, as I mentioned about how pop has, steals from all the different genres, he already knows the dance moves and uh, lyrics to their songs as well. So he's able, he's able to copy both groups respectively. And he suggests to the two groups after they're done is that they should be, their groups should be safe too. Because, uh, you know, the rock group is all like, oh, we're going to take over all music. So why would the hunters even bother joining. It's kind of odd that they would even decide to do that. And we see that Hickory joins Poppy, and he finally admits that he was actually among the two yodeler trolls that were also hunting them all along. Um, so the rockers arrive and get uh, get another little song in there. And we see, uh, we cut back to Biggie, who had ran all the way back to the village, but we see their village, the pup village, got wrecked. So he decides that he's going to go all the way back. And the other trolls uh, kind of sneak out, and they say that they want to join and help Poppy uh, with her little quest. So they do so. Uh, so they instantly arrive at the location that they need to be in and they as the pop rock as the pop uh, trolls they are able to fake out being rock trolls and I, as you almost noticed I almost said pop rock which I I'm, which is totally a thing I'm pretty sure <laughs> 
So anyways, um, so we see that uh, Riff is talking to Poppy because she captured her. And she talks about how the two of them are more alike than uh, Poppy would like to admit. Uh, Riff is also talking about being, uh, you know, about the whole listening thing that, that Poppy instantly goes, Oh my goodness, she's almost like me! Oh no! Uh, nonetheless, the rocker in her starts her little song having all of the little chords, all the strings, I should say. And she also has all of the leaders as with her as well. And as she's about to hit the power cord, and as she's as she already zombified every other, uh, uh, you know, troll into being a zombie troll, including Poppy herself. Uh, but Poppy uh, faked it out somehow including the red eyes question mark but she had the ear things but that doesn't explain how her air eyes are red but whatever uh, and this is after ranch arrives by the way uh, and he was actually the first to get rocket zombified But as I mentioned, Poppy gets out with the whole faking it part. So she grabs the guitar and smashes it, causing all of the strings to break along with it. Uh, and Riff is going off about how she ruined everything again. Uh, you know, she destroyed all music. But... As the trolls are mourning their loss of music, the hat troll uh, starts, we see his little pink heart glowing, uh, and then he starts to do a little beat, and then others join him as well. And then somebody, I forget who says it, I think it was the country troll or one of the main lead, I think it was like his mom that he met. On the ship that's talking about how music is no longer defined by these objects it's no longer defined by the strings it's defined by something that comes from the heart so poppy and branch after the music picks up a little bit uh start to sing another original song with the two uh mixing along all of the different genres so uh it's as predictable as I thought it was going to be in terms of as soon as the movie went into all the musics being under one regime, I was like, oh, they're going to do a music melody with all the genres, and they do so. And of course, the rocker joins, the rocker riff joins them as well, and Poppy even wants to be her friend still. So after all of that concludes, Branch finally confesses that he loves Poppy, and Poppy does so in return. And we see at the end of the movie that she is now teaching her new history with the kids from each of the tribes. And that was Trolls World Tour. So yeah, this movie definitely has an odd beginning to say the very least, and a few conveniences along the way. And yes, it is very predictable where the movie is going to go. Uh, but I've always been someone who's also believed that, you know, music is important. And, you know, showing the new generation of uh, people, uh, young people, these classic songs from, either, from whatever genre is pretty important. Uh, keeping those traditions alive of the different genres. Um, and I, I do like the little, you know, the little pokes at some of the genres as we move along. Uh, the relationship with Poppy and Branch, as the movie was going along and as they were having their little uh, argument, uh, I was reminiscing about 
how that kind of reminded me of Mulan and um, her uh, boyfriend slash husband at the end of the movie. Um, what was his name? I can't remember. Uh, uh, anyway, um, you know, there's that movie uh, in Mulan 2. Um, and the thing about that movie is that I actually like their relationship building in that movie, how they're that different. However, the execution of how they set that up is really bad. The whole thing with Mushu was terrible. Um, other than that, like I said, I actually really like their relationship, and it, it's the optimism of Mulan versus the other guy's um, pessimistic attitude, or, you know, very... Uh, focused on the mission, and that's very much uh, the relationship between Branch and Poppy. Uh, Branch is the very mission-oriented uh, character, and Poppy is the very optimistic character. We can do this, never give up, etc., etc. Um, and uh, they kind of stick with each other throughout the movie, but they only have, like, that one moment kind of in the middle-ish part of the movie where they have that argument, like, that character interaction. I think they could have used at least one more character interaction of, like, importance. Because other than that, they're sort of just traveling and singing music with each other. Um, you know, because we're kind of, when we're focusing on the relationship part of it, we're mostly kind of following Branch's perspective on the relationship. He's like, oh, I love her, or I have feelings for her. But we don't get that with Poppy until the very end. Uh, actually, kind of. We kind of hear her say at the beginning of the movie, like, oh, we're in the friendship zone. And he's like, oh, no! You know, that sort of mentality. But it would have been interesting to see her sort of shift into, like, oh, I have feelings for him, too. Have a moment like that, add that in, just to give their relationship a little bit more of a, a build-up. Uh, Riff is an interesting antagonist in terms of, like, she has that interesting moment as an antagonist about friendship. Um, and her moment with Poppy along with it. Um, so yeah, it has that as well. Um, I think this is an, a, a fine, uh, family movie with a whole range of music. Uh, it does feel like when they do their whole musical bits, it does look like a more music video type of movie, which, you know, it fits the genre, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think this movie is fine. Um, I, I think I'm pretty much had felt that way about, about tro the first Trolls, um, so, you know, I think it's fine for what it is. Uh, I'd give the movie a 6 out of 10. Um, you know, there, again, there are some conveniences toward the end of the movie, and again, that relationship building, I, I think there could have been a little bit more of that in the movie as well. Other than that, I think the movie is pretty solid, again, for what it is. Which is essentially a music video movie with a, a little bit of a story mixed in with the relationship, which, again, could have used a little bit of that building. So that's my review of Trolls World Tour. And if you ended up enjoying it, then please consider joining the dis uh, looking at the description, which we'll have in the first uh, thing, my Discord server. The second will lead you to my Patreon page, and any donations are desperately needed. And until next time, everyone, bye-bye.